I'm looking for 3,024 people is the latest example of the complete lack of quality control for games on Steam. The game costs $15 and is nothing but 250 megabytes of AI-generated text-to-speech voices and Creative Commons assets. Also, the first level can only be completed once the developers sold 3,024 copies of the game, which totals to about $40,000. And yes, there's NFTs involved too. No, there's nothing wrong with the video. This is actual gameplay footage. I forgot to mention that the game has no graphics. I'm John, and welcome back to another session of me subjecting myself to mental abuse for your entertainment. Today, I'll be playing a game called I'm Looking for 3024 People. I'm Looking for 3024 People is an alternate reality game available on Steam for $15. Can you run, swim, and use a shotgun without your eyes? I don't know. Can you successfully scam 3,000 people out of 15 bucks? Well, let's find out. If you're not already familiar with the term alternate reality game, they're basically interactive mysteries that combine internet and real life aspects. Players from all around the world can work together to solve the mystery and uncover the story by doing things like solving ciphers, finding hidden websites, and visiting places in real life. Most importantly, they tend to be free to play, with costs absorbed either through supporting products or through promotional relationships with existing products. So the fact that this game costs $15 is already quite suspicious. Also, that's not the original price, it actually started out as a $50 NFT sold on OpenSea. Yeah, you heard me right. Originally, the only way to participate in this ARG was to purchase a 1 of 3,024 NFT for 0.03 Ethereum, which was somewhere in the ballpark of $50 at the time of these NFTs being listed. The idea behind the game was that only 3,024 people would ever have a chance to play the game, and what better way to enforce artificial scarcity than to arbitrarily limit your game keys via overpriced NFTs. Anyway, the developer of the game went around to a variety of different forums and news sites to spread the word about their game, but was almost entirely ignored. People didn't want to have to buy an NFT to play an ARG, especially not when it costs $50. In response to this lack of response, the developer moved the game to Steam, which is where it started at $20, but it's been now lowered to only $15. So it's pretty obvious right out of the gate that the developer cares about making money first. This is a big no-no in the ARG community, which is probably why nobody's seemed to care about it at all. But as the host of Dirty Jobs, it's my duty to dive in and dig through this disaster and play it so you don't have to. Make sure to subscribe so YouTube will give me more ad revenue to waste on NFTs. Let's jump right in and get started. Launching the game treats us to the following message. I'm looking for 3,024 people is an alternate reality game. The chapter you're entering is only a small part of the whole game. Before starting this chapter, we strongly recommend that you exit the game and visit the website below to learn all the details. The first thing that this game asked me to do is to not play the game. That's a new one. Frankscomputer.online as I said before, this is an ARG, so there's going to be a mystery to solve, and this website has the keys to solve that mystery. Let's check out the video under the tab The Mission and listen to our instructions from Frank. I'll tell you my whole story later. In this video, I will talk about the main subject. I am a computer engineer. After graduating from my department with a first degree in 1974, I started working at a company that produces advanced technology, the name of which I will not disclose at the moment. This is hilarious. It's just an AI text-to-speech voice reading a poorly written script full of grammatical errors. If this is supposed to be engaging and draw me into the mystery, it's a total failure. But as a piece of comedy, this is great. Everyone has to find these remaining three digits. The plot of the ARG can basically be summarized as there's a computer that has some secret info on it. The only way to get into it is to have 3,024 people pay Frank $15 to get a code and then do some arbitrary task with that code. What else is on this website? Well, nothing of interest. There's a few folders that are protected by passwords, which you can find in a file labeled passwords that just lead to a bunch of pictures. These are supposed to be creepy because they're old and they photoshopped the eyes out. I tried to find these photos on Google Images, but I couldn't, so maybe they're actually real people. Oh my god, this is so scary. There's also some live cameras, which are all random locations in Izmir, Turkey. Wow, this is cool. They put up live cameras and we're supposed to watch these for something to happen? That's awesome. But wait, why does this one have a little black square? It's almost like they're trying to censor something. 
Right-clicking the feed and opening it in a new tab reveals that the person that made this site just put a black square over top of this watermark, which, after searching for it, led me to a bunch of Turkish government websites. The game's website is just re-hosting these live feeds from the Turkish city of Izmir. Is this the mystery? Uncovering just how lazy the person that put this together is? So far, nothing about this ARG is intriguing. Also, all the websites accessible without even purchasing the game on Steam. I've actually done nothing with the game so far besides launch it and then get told to close it. It's time to go back and see what else I can do in the game now that I know my mission. Just kidding, that goofy video barely explained anything. After launching the game again, we now see an interactive menu with six different buttons. Clicking on most of these buttons just takes you to another screen that says you cannot access this area. But one of them does something different, the project button. Clicking this takes us to this ominous warning, telling us that we're about to witness a secret experiment. Ooh, scary. This is a blind experiment. Focus on conversations. Experiment tries to distract you. Use headphones. Then you hear some voices. Me describing these wouldn't do the game justice, so just have a listen yourself. Adam, do you hear me? What? What's this? Down. I finally got to you. Who are you? Are you here? I'm not there, but I can see you. Stop walking and start running right away. It's getting closer. Why? What is coming? We want to go back to that place. No! Then get those things up right away and start running. But I don't see anything. Where will I go? I'll find you. Now start running straight ahead. Come on, hurry up. These are all just text-to-speech voices. This is the pinnacle of low effort. The voices just give you instructions on how to move, saying go left, go forward, and so on, and you just press those keys on your keyboard. There are no visuals. There is nothing but a black screen. You press the WASD keys to move, and you use sound to tell when you bump into a wall. There's also spooky rain noises and creepy stock music. I could have made this in Unity in about two days, with the first day spent making the game, and the second day spent downloading a bunch of assets off of freesound.org. The instructions are unintelligible at some points, since the text-to-speech is hard to hear, and also a mess of broken English. This leads to some unintentionally hilarious moments. What key is this? I don't know! You may need it! Take it with you! What? You're leading me on? But you don't know what you're doing! Just take the key with you! I already got it! In my hand! Okay! I came! Are you sure? I came by just counting ten steps. Uh, what's this? Is it a door? I think I came right. I have no choice but to open the door. Okay, okay, you son of a bitch. Do you want me to play this game? I will. I eventually reached the point at which I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do, because they stopped giving me instructions, and I was basically supposed to just wander around blindly listening to the sound of raindrops to guide me. I didn't want to waste too much time doing this because I didn't want to exceed Steam's refund threshold of two hours, so I just closed the game and headed to the Discord to figure out what happens when you reach the end. Purchasing the game on Steam is not required to participate in the Discord server though, anyone can join. Here in this Discord, I learned that after completing the maze, you're rewarded with an image that has 3024 codes on it. These images can also just be found by opening the game's files and looking at the JPEG, so you don't actually have to complete the dumb blind maze thing to get the code. The next step is to pick a code from this list. There's no official claiming system, though. You're supposed to coordinate with everyone to ensure that you don't pick the same code as someone else. Then, at 8pm every Wednesday, a Discord bot will send a message indicating that it's time to enter the codes. You'll then have 10 minutes for 3,024 unique users to send one code each from this image to unlock the next step of the mystery. If you fail to do this, it resets and you can't try again until the following Wednesday. The catch? Well, you have to have your Steam account linked to your Discord to access this channel, and your Steam account must own the game. So this is the only thing in the Discord that's locked behind the paywall. So therefore, the only way that this would ever work is if 3,024 unique individuals all purchase the game, then they all need to log on at exactly 8pm Pacific Time and coordinate ahead of time to enter a code in the Discord chat, and they must make no mistakes as they only have 10 minutes to do this. 10 minutes is 600 seconds, and with 3,024 messages, that means that the users must send 5 messages per second for 10 minutes straight in a Discord channel. 
it's almost impossible to coordinate 25 people to log on at the same time to play World of Warcraft. How would it be possible to coordinate over 3,000 people to be online in the same 10 minute window all assigned to a unique code? And they all have to spend $15. Discord can barely handle 30 people sending messages at the same time without crashing the entire server. It definitely can't handle 5 messages per second for 10 minutes straight, so not only would this never work due to the impossible logistical feat of coordinating such a large group of people, it would never work simply because Discord can't handle that many users at once. And since everyone has to spend $15, that means that the developer is guaranteed to get at least $40,000 before the first step of this ARG can even be completed. Do you see how ridiculous this sounds? There's actually a second step that has to be completed as well though, one that's actually significantly easier than the one that I just described. In the Discord server, there's a bot that's always sitting in a voice channel streaming something. When I went to get footage for the video though, it seemed that the stream had been broken and there was nothing on screen. But I saw this work a few days ago, but didn't record it. What it's supposed to do is display an image of a computer screen with a bunch of lines on it. On this screen, there's 35 different squares, each of which can be moved a certain number of spaces up by typing the space's corresponding letter in chat. After a few seconds of no messages though, the squares fall back down to their starting position. So to win, you need to get all of the squares to the top of the screen, basically. Imagine Twitch plays Flappy Bird, because that's literally what this is. A popular Brazilian streamer found this game and was the captain in the largest attempt to solve this puzzle. He led a coordinated effort with his viewers to attempt to complete it, with 35 people in chat trying to control the bot. However, after hours of trying, they were unable to line up every square, because with that many people sending messages in Discord, it was slowing the entire server down. This meant that by the time that the message had processed, the line had already fallen back down. After hours of trying, they just finally gave up. The community then began to get upset and started calling out the developer for essentially creating a scam, saying that this is impossible. Up to this point, the developer had rarely sent messages in the Discord, but they did chime in to defend themselves. They said, this is not impossible, we actually were able to get this to work and we tested it and you were so close, so keep trying. First of all, you developed an actual game, you know. Why didn't you just put this puzzle inside of the game? Then you wouldn't be rate limited by Discord's terrible servers. But I guess that would require actual work because you'd need to create a Unity game with networking features. The developers clearly incapable of even creating visuals, so I doubt that they would be able to figure out how to program something with online features. That's why they're just doing it through a Discord bot. After getting fed up with how impossible it was to coordinate 35 people for the first puzzle, that streamer and his community realized that this was nothing more than a cash grab scam, and they urged everyone to refund the game. I feel bad for this streamer. He was just interested in trying to solve a mystery, and he sort of unintentionally got his community involved in a scam. Luckily, everyone was most likely able to get a refund thanks to Steam's great refund policy. Imagine if this actually used NFTs though, like the original plan. Then, nobody would have been able to get a refund. That's probably why the developer chose to use NFTs in the first place. Reading through the game's Steam reviews, there's a bunch of positive reviews from accounts that have literally only one game. Also, they have some very strangely high playtimes. Who plays this game for more than 15 minutes, let alone over 4 hours? Also, over the week that I've been working on this video, I've noticed that the average review seems to teeter between mixed and positive. It's like every time someone leaves a negative review, the developer counters with two fake positive reviews. The few negative reviews all share my thoughts though. This is just a scam for the developers to sell 3,024 copies. The developer also has a post on the game's Steam Store page labeled Watch the Community Play, and it features a bunch of clips of streamers that played this game. They must have forgotten to pre-screen these clips though, because every clip featured here just involves the streamer making fun of the game. They all launch the game, laugh at how bad the text-to-speech voices are, look at the website, click around a bit, and say, this has to be a scam, and then refund the game. There also, apparently, used to be a tournament for this game where they promised $20,000 in prizes. Also, if you were a Twitch streamer or a YouTuber, then you could enter by having other people buy the game and then write your name down in a form. Whoever got their name written down the most would win $1,000. This is the worst ARG I've ever seen. It's physically impossible to complete, it costs $15 to enter, and you're financially encouraged to recruit other people to join it. 
There's no way that this isn't just a money grab scam created by some dude in Turkey with a few weeks of effort. Not much thought seems to have been put into designing this, and the person that made it advertised heavily. Not only did they contact a bunch of Twitch streamers and YouTubers with free keys, they also paid to have press releases sent out in various online newspapers. This entire thing was a get-rich-quick scheme from the start. However, it seems that less than 100 copies of this trash were ever sold, as there's only 53 people in the Discord that have the role you get from purchasing the game. But that doesn't mean that those people didn't just refund the game, since you keep the role after refunding the game. I proved this myself by refunding the game, and look, I still have the role to this day. If the person behind this was actually interested in making an ARG, they would not be charging $15 to enter. ARGs are usually free and spread via word of mouth. This game is the complete opposite of everything that an ARG is supposed to be. This is just a scam designed specifically to take advantage of people in the ARG niche. Plus, it's not even an interesting mystery. There's no motivation to solve this, the writing is terrible, and the voice acting is a joke. Luckily though, it seems that everyone who got involved in this initially has given up on trying, and the Discord hasn't seen much activity in the past week. The developer seems to have almost abandoned the game entirely, as the Discord bot broke and the dev hasn't responded to any messages in over a week. In conclusion, Steam really needs to step up their quality control. Today, as long as you're willing to pay $100 to get your game listed on Steam, you can put anything on there. While it's good that they have a strong refund policy, I'd like to see them look into games that have a high percentage of refunds and get them removed from the store. While I don't think this is a scam in the sense where the developer is just stealing your money and giving you nothing, it's still a scam. A scam, by definition, is something deceptive used to trick someone out of money. The game is deceptive in the fact that it's barely a game, it's extremely lazy, and the person behind this is locking the first step of the puzzle behind a $40,000 paywall. It's dishonest, scummy, and gives the entire community of ARG developers a bad reputation. Thanks to the viewer of the channel that suggested this game to me. There's plenty of other scam games like this on Steam, and you guys know I love playing bad games, so please continue to give me suggestions in the comments. As my channel's grown a lot over the past few months, I want to expand my content to more general scam games or lazy cash grab games while still reviewing the NFT and crypto games since there's a lot of overlap there. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. As always, I'm John, and I'll see you next time, unless one of these sketchy games destroys my computer. Goodbye.